Hi folks, welcome to my first video. My name's Seth, but uh, I prefer to be called Mouse. I've uh, carried that nickname since I was about 16 years of age, back in the days when people used to say ye and thou and that sort of thing, obviously. Um, hence the name of my channel, Mouse Made. This is my first video, as I said, and so if I stuff anything up, forgive me, please. I've tried, I've run a few trials, so hopefully this will be okay. I've got the exposures right and all that sort of thing. Now all I have to do is make sure that my jab is halfway intelligible. I intend to do quite a few projects, but um, the road to hell being paved with good intentions, I'll probably only do a few. But they'll range from uh, sort of uh, mechanical stuff like this through to machining jobs through to perhaps uh, theoretical rantings about um, how to make a very uh, high sensitivity manometer. Um, although in this day and age I believe you're not supposed to call them manometers, you've got to be politically correct and call them personometers. Uh, that's one that actually is on my list of things to do. But today, let's get started on this. This is, as you may have worked out, a tractor seat. It's off a of Ford 2110, I think, that belongs to a friend of mine. And um, he bought it recently second hand and its previous owners have obviously thought that um, a vinyl covered seat with a row of stitching in it here is, uh, is going to be completely impervious to the weather and therefore it should be left outside. Well, that's completely As you can see, they've probably stuck the, for the seat on its tilt forward to keep it safe. But... Um, that's exposed this part to the weather, and even worse, the water's still got inside. The water is in the foam padding in here. I can feel that that's damp. And of course it's rusted out this leading edge. So, this is a repair by the way, it's not a restoration. Um, hence, I'm not going to be super fussy about it, although I am going to be reasonably fussy. Now the intention is, You can see this edge is very mangled and my intention is to cut this off across here using the angle grinder. Now I'll do it from the other side so that I can cut this without cutting this. This much heavier plate distributes the load of the mount into the seat and uh, we don't want to interfere with that. It is fixed onto the sheet metal via a couple of spot welds, these round little pimply indentation things here, easy enough to remove them just by drilling from the other side to remove the, uh, the spot weld in this material. You can get spot weld cutters, um, I don't have any because I've got drills. So the intention then, once this is cut off, you can see that there is a slight bend here and then this return. And this return's also got a fancy little double return on the edge of it here which I'm not going to be reproducing one because it's not absolutely necessary and two because it's too freaking hard. Um, so my intention then is to get a piece of plain carbon steel in 20 gauge which is about what this seat is. At this point I'd like to make a shout out to GSJ Fabrications in St Mary's. I went down there to buy a small off cut off them. I keep stock of some materials but I don't have any 20 gauge and they were very good. They gave me a bloody great square metre of the stuff. Didn't ask for any money, wouldn't accept any money, so DSJ Fabrications, thanks fellas, I really appreciate it. So what I'll do is I'll get the plain metal once this is cut off. Of course all this trim will be gone. Um, I have to remove the trim A because it gets in the way and B because sure as there's poo in a goose I'll set fire to it with the oxylator on. Um, I can put a slight bend in it here and a slight return so it will be coming out straight with a slight bend and a slight upward return. That's fairly easy to do. I'll work out if we were to straighten this radius here out. Trying to get you a good picture of it. That radius, if we straighten it out, it will come down to about here. So I'll measure that and I'll add about a centimetre. And I'll put that piece of metal on, 
and then I'll get the, uh, the oxy torch out and working around here I will start shrinking it and once I've shrunk it a fair bit I should be able to turn it from being flat like this to having a nice little curled up edge on it. Once I've done that I can mark out exactly where that edge is supposed to finish at this height, trim it off with the, uh, the tin, uh, tin snips and basically that's it. It'll be repaired. The rest of this we can hit with some sort of reducer if we want, phosphoric acid base perhaps. Um, otherwise we can use one of those uh, self-reducing paints, the uh, enamels which are very handy and also fortunately come in forward blue or very close to forward blue. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get the trim off. This little thing around the outside just clips on over the edge and is reusable. The trick to reusing it is to squeeze the whole thing down with extremely strong fingers or a pair of pliers or something all the way around and then you can whack it back on and it'll work fine. We will need a further length of it because the bit round the front is missing. So I can then peel off the trim, which there's a little bit of glue here which I can remove. And the rest of it is probably not glued because it will be rusted away. And there you are. Oh dear, doesn't that look good? Okay, you can see there's a slightly damp spot there. It feels damp. The seat, that is really quite wet. Now this tractor was under cover for a number of weeks before the seat was taken off it um, and it's still wet, it's still wet. So that shows the importance of keeping your tractor under cover because in all those weeks this hasn't dried out and obviously this rust is the long term result. Um, Keep your equipment under cover. Put it in a shed. If you don't have a shed, put a cover over it. At the very least, I mean, this is a diesel tractor. The engine will take all sorts of environmental abuse, but the seat won't. Get a plastic garbage bag. Put it over the seat. Get one of those fancy ones that you use that's heavy duty and it's got drawstrings in it. Put it over the seat. Pull the drawstrings. Won't blow off in the wind, and you won't end up having to replace your seat all the time. So I'll put that out in the sun to dry. I'm not going to open the door to the, uh, the shed at the moment because the sunlight will really stuff up the exposure on the camera. Okay, so this is worse than I expected it to be. As you can see, the rust is quite severe and goes right into the back here. Now it's only surface rust, but I'll bring it up a bit closer in the hopes that you can see there's quite severe pitting here. There's a lot of material lost. This metal is actually quite thin. Across here it's very bad. And you won't be able to see this all that well. But this manky piece here has actually got a split which runs all the way up here and terminates about here. So actually I'm going to have to replace the seat from about here down. So that's essentially here. Now that suddenly turns this into a much harder job because I've got a compound bender that I've got to put into all this. I don't have English wheels, I don't have any uh, specific sheet metal working equipment except for some dollies and hammers. I could do it, I don't want to do it. That's Suddenly this has become a much bigger job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and see the owner of the tractor and let him know just how bad this seat is and ask him if he absolutely wants to proceed. He's not trying to keep this tractor original. He'd like to keep it original as much as possible, but he's not fanatical about it. Now, there's a lot of work in my having to strip this off, cut this, replace this, effectively about a third of the seat, and to be honest, I don't want to do it. Um, I would much rather put the effort into making a mounting adapter for an aftermarket seat. You can buy an aftermarket seat quite cheap 
Um, they're under $100 here in Australia for an average quality one, which uh, they do get good reviews, so they're not the best. The only complaint I've seen about the aftermarket ones, the padding's a bit thin. Um, I wouldn't call this padding extremely thick. Um, you know, you may have three centimetres there, four centimetres if you're lucky. So the other alternative for him, of course, is to get one of those old uh, Ferguson-type seats with no padding on them at all, um, which is what I recommend for you people who leave your tractors out in the weather um, because the foam won't retain water and it won't rust away. So uh, you'll have a nice weatherproof seat and a sore bum. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of time travel. That is, I'm going to pause the video, go away, have a chat with the owner and um, tell him that I would rather invest my time making up an adapter plate to adapt an aftermarket seat onto his tractor than repairing this bloody rotten mess. Um, ideally, with the amount of material that's lost here, we should, in fact, replace it from here down. <laughs> which is tantamount to replacing the whole seat anyway. Okay folks, I'm going to leave it at that for now and do the magic disappearing act and time travel into the next uh, instant where you will see me back with uh, either the uh, ongoing repairs or wrapping up the video, which will be a bit anticlimactic, but there you go, that's life. Okay, see you in a second. Okay folks, I'm back again. I've had a word with Gary, who owns the tractor, and uh, the communal decision is, uh, I told him we're going to put another seat on his tractor. <laughs> um, he's happy with that. I think he'd prefer to keep this seat, but he realises that there's just too much work in it um, from a practical point of view. So we're going to buy an aftermarket seat and adapt it onto the tractor. I'll probably make a video of that. I may have to incorporate some stills of the tractor because it's uh, down in the bush and um, I don't want to have to set up the, uh, the GoPro down there. Um, although I suppose that's not too difficult. Anyway, we'll work that out when we come to it. Um, it may be interesting also because at the same time we're going to put on a mounting for seat belts. This tractor doesn't come with a seat belt standard. It does come with a ROPS of course but it doesn't come with a seat belt and a ROPS without a seat belt means simply that the tractor falls halfway over, you fall out and then the tractor goes completely over and squashes you. Um, the ROPS may uh, prolong your life a little bit so you lie in agony in the bush for a few hours until you die. Um, if you have a seat belt then um, you're in a much better situation. So we are going to put a seat belt on this and uh, perhaps that will make an interesting video. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm sorry that it turned out to be a bit anticlimactic, but this pack of poo ticket isn't really worth uh, the effort. If you've got any comments, questions, um, anything to say, projects you want to see, whatever, um, please leave them below. And um, I'll catch up with you on the next video. Cheers.